Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to talk about how you can test if your ship is still watertight. What we're going to do today is look at the chalk test. So, when you build a ship, you build it to be watertight and therefore airtight as well. But uh, when your ship stays in service for as long as the battleship did, it might degrade over time. So how do you tell if your ship is still watertight? And in this video, we're gonna be specifically focusing on how to test your watertight doors with a chalk test. If you would like help getting to sleep tonight and more information on the various types of doors on the ship, there's a link in the description below to another video we shot talking about the various types of doors we've got around here. But to recap, watertight doors have a raised piece of metal around them. That's called the knife edge. That is supposed to mate up with a rubber gasket inside the door. What we're testing is to make sure this rubber gasket still works these things dry out over time, especially after a decade in the mothball fleet. And you can pry these out and put a new rubber gasket in. I've done it. It sucks, but it's doable. Um, but you're not just worried about your rubber gasket. You're also worried about your dogs. The dogs have nuts on them that can be tightened or loosened. So you want to tighten this to the point that the knife edge is engaging the gasket all the way around, uh, but not like overly compressing it to the point that it's gonna wear out and you're gonna have to go in and replace this whole thing because that blows. You think you've got your dogs tightened. How do we test that? Chalk test. So in our tool issue room, I found this weird piece of chalk. This isn't what I use to uh, color on the sidewalk. So it gets you wondering, what the heck is this for? Chalk test. You're gonna have that word memorized by the end of this video. So this is the simplest thing that you can do. Uh, if you're a damage controlman, give me a shout out in the comments below. You've undoubtedly had to do this before. But all we're doing is chalking the whole knife edge all the way around. Your knife edge is supposed to be paint free. You'll notice we're running into paint as we go and that's causing issues uh, for the chalk. So it's a little bit more difficult. If this had been painted by an actual sailor, they would have left the, the knife edge clear because they've been yelled at DCs in the past. All right, so now we have chalked the whole knife edge. Part of that was clearing the paint off so the chalk will actually stick to the bare metal. And uh, now let's actually dog this door. If I was doing this for real, I'd have a uh, dogging wrench here, which is just a piece of pipe that's slotted next to each door you pull off and get on there to, to really crank it down tight. I want to be able to open this when we're done because this is on the tour route though. All right, moment of truth. Let's see how watertight this has been. The ship would have last been tested for this in like 89 or 90 and museum ships don't maintain their watertight integrity throughout. We're near the ship's bakery on the starboard side right now, heading towards the chow line on the tour route. So, so this door does not get actuated. We don't normally close this. Uh, even some of our exterior water doors are not fully watertight anymore, but that's okay because we're a permanently moored structure. We're, we're not going out through high seas or worried about that. Uh, this door closed, even though it might let some water in, is not going to be enough to flood the ship. But that's not good enough for a ship in service. You not only have to be watertight, but airtight. The battleships are designed for NBC warfare, nuclear, biological, and chemical. So particularly when they're operating in the Persian Gulf in the uh, late 80s and early 90s, we're worried about chemical warfare. So your ship needs to be airtight in addition to watertight. Let's see how this door has held up over the last 30 some odd years, basically my entire lifetime without being serviced. Moment of truth. And so you see a, a pretty unbroken chalk line here. 
Uh, less so when we get down to this point between the bottom two dogs there. Uh, holy cow, uh, this door is pretty close to passing a chalk test after 30 years. The rubber gasket's still in good shape, although it's got some paint on it, that's no good. The knife edge is still in good shape, although that had some paint on it. Uh, but it's showing chalk all the way around. Now, these gaskets come in strips. So if you're doing this right, you're gonna start your strip up here. You're gonna go all the way around so that you end up here. And there's just a little gap at the top. And, and the gap is small enough that when this door is crushed shut, the rubber will expand and fill in. If you look at this, you'll see that uh, they must have been using the end of a roll. So we've actually got two gaps. And that's the only part of this whole thing that isn't ideal. And so notice one piece of rubber ends right here and then they inserted a new piece there. And th there's no wiggle room. You've really got to stretch the rubber out to fit it in here because there's a lip that it's got to go under. Uh, so they weren't able to get it perfectly close up. And then they added a new piece. And when you get it into this point, you can cut off what's left. So that's very much they got to an end of a roll. And rather than pulling it all out again and doing a new one and wasting almost a full doors gasket worth it, they put in a new one. All right, so now we're on the other side of the door. You'll notice the door has a handle on each side. So whichever side you're on, you can uh, open and close it. The handle on this side, on the inside part of the door, has a little nub on it, which is what's engaging the door. On this side, we've got a pair of nuts, and that's what holds the handle in place at the right thickness to engage this. So we noticed that there wasn't much chalk in between these lower two dogs on this outboard side of the door. Now that could have been that there was an issue with the chalk. Uh, there was paint here. So if I go back and re-chalk it and close the door, it, it may well show that that was a perfect chalk test. Uh, but I want to show you what you would do to tighten these. So the two nuts, the outside nut is just to retain the inside nut so that doesn't back out. So you would take that off and then you tighten that inside nut, maybe a half a turn. And I, I would do that with both the upper and lower dog here. And then you put the lock nut back on there to hold it in place. So you're, you're always gonna see two nuts with these on a working door. And then we would close it through the chalk test again. And at that point, uh, it would definitely be a pass. We've got the regular watertight doors like we just used with the individual dogs. We've also got quick acting watertight doors like this one, where all you gotta do is turn the wheel and the dogs come out. Same exact principle. These dogs are engaging little brass uh, raised pieces and it's crushing this knife edge against this rubber gasket. And if you look at this rubber gasket real closely, you can see some remnants of blue chalk from a previous test. That's probably a test that was done 30 years ago because the museum hasn't chalk tested it and I did that door, not this one. Uh, so that, that's really cool. And I'm not gonna go through with the whole rigmarole because it's, it's the exact same thing. You chalk the whole door frame, you close it, you dog it, you see what works. Uh, if there's no chalk on this part, you tighten the nut to get this dog to engage more. Simple. Uh, it's a lot less easy when you consider how many freaking doors there are on an Iowa class battleship. We've got something like 1,100 rooms. Uh, most of our rooms are not glory holes with only one way in and out. Most of them have multiple ways in and out. And then some of them, like uh, back here where the chow line would be forming, we've got side-by-side -side doors. So this small passageway actually has four watertight doors in it. You multiply that by all the rooms on the ship, and our DCs were going around like crazy. And you know what? They, they did a tremendous job. Uh, Battleship New Jersey earned the uh, Red DC Excellence Award a couple of times, so it's painted on the side of the superstructure. The, this ship was renowned in the fleet in its day for its damage control abilities, and the crew prided themselves in it and did a lot of work above and beyond what a normal ship would do 
to be damage control experts. Uh, and it shows, as we can still see remnants of chalk tests they did over 30 years ago, and this door that hasn't been serviced in uh, 30 years, one third of the ship's entire life, um, is still completely watertight. And that was just closing it by hand. I didn't even need to put a dogging wrench on there and really crank down on those things. So that is absolutely amazing. Uh, other museum ships I've done this, this chalk test on for fun um, don't pass with flying colors. The, the doors are warped. In some cases, the doors are rusted through and aren't watertight uh, regardless, which we're inside, so that's not really an issue with these doors. Um, some of our exterior doors are that way. Uh, the hard work that this crew did before I was born still shows in the museum ship. And if, God forbid, there was some issue with the uh, exterior door overhead leaking into this space or an air conditioning system or a deck drain or something, we could close these doors and isolate it and keep the uh, rest of the ship safe. What's your least favorite sort of preventative maintenance you had to do? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from a number of other businesses and viewers like yourselves. If you would like to support the museum, there's a link in the description for ways you can donate that uh, really helps us keep making these videos. And you can also support us by liking, sharing, and, and uh, subscribing to all of our videos. That way, more people hear about what we're doing and find out about the museum. Thanks for watching.